July the 29th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at the USGS, and we've had an 8.2 earthquake. Many of you are aware of it, and a tremendous amount of aftershocks. There's actually 103 quakes as I've zoomed into this section of the map. Now, if you remember a couple of days ago, we talked about a CME that was coming in from the sun, and it was one of the filament releases, and they release in a spiraling motion. And if you remember, I said the last two that I saw in Solar Cycle 24 that released like that struck the northern ring of fire up around Alaska, I think was almost my exact words, and with a 8.2 quakes. It's amazing. I don't know how that happens or why, but it looks like that's exactly what has happened now, guys. There's no tsunami warnings out now, but this thing rung the entire planet. There are buoys going off everywhere. I don't, again, I don't see any tsunami information, but uh, this thing was a planet shaker. They're saying the 8.2 was 104 kilometers southeast of Perryville, Alaska at 32.2 kilometers. Uh, kilometers deep notice there's on the right excuse me the left side of the screen 8.2 6.1 5.9 5.8 5.5 and uh they're not all here but most of them are here you've got one down in Myanmar, one in santiago but the strong ones are here and there are 102 of them but the entire ring of fire felt this impact now check this out guys from japan all the way over into Cascadia, all of these buoys are rocking. Not only that, look on into the east coast, from down in the Caribbean, all the way into the North Atlantic. Check that out. And the ones that are beeping have picked up this information. Now, if we go back and look at this, now this station is called 46403 right here, and this is south of the where the quake epicenter was. And you see a very quick jump of about 50 feet here from bottom to top. And it occurred within 15 seconds. Your blue line cruising along here at around 400 or 4,400 and maybe 87 meters. It drops suddenly, just like a slip fault zone, down to almost 480 and then jump back up to around 493. So you've got, to, again, around 50 feet or so of movement here. Now, again, there's no tsunami warnings, and it looks like the ocean kind of went back to normal, but with a decline in the wave height, and that's kind of uh, what all the buoys are showing right now. You go down off the, uh, the further out you get from this epicenter, or close to the epicenter, the impact was less. Now, going to the further south buoy along the west coast of the U.S., this is in the Cascadia Fault Zone. You saw not nearly the impact of the event here. You've a very quick jar, then everything went back to normal. It just happened very quickly within a minute. Normally, these wave cycles happen in a 15-minute interval. You see this blue line, but within one minute, you, you had a quick, first you had a quick 15-second drop, and then a quick one-minute response to try to come back to normal. And that's just the further away you got, the less powerful it is. And if we come due south of the epicenter to the Hawaiian Islands, you can see, again, it wasn't as drastic, but we had a very quick rise and drop in 15 seconds here. Then in one minute, a very quick drop before it went back up. But again, we are dealing within the parameters of uh, what the wave heights were at this point. And if we go all the way to the east coast of the U.S., the northeast coast right there, you see the same thing. Uh, not a big uh, movement out of the uh, original or the uh, ongoing wave height, but a fair, very quick drop. And then right here in the middle of that drop, it felt the most powerful part of the quake. And it continued to drop, but again, it stayed within the normal parameters of these wave heights and drops of this trough that we're seeing. But these, they go on, again, all the way down into the Caribbean. Here we had a similar um, drop and rise like we did uh, under the epicenter, but not nearly as strong. You're just dealing with just maybe a meter or two here, but it was a very quick jolt, and uh, it was felt, believe me. And looking at the National 
tsunami warning center there are no tsunamis notice in the green light at the top no tsunami warning advisory watcher threat guys i'm sure they had some pretty large waves in alaska around this area it's just not very populated out on the aleutian chain there so i'm not sure what kind of details but a quake like that it will shake a few waves up you saw a 50 foot uh drop and rise just south of that uh, epicenter and nine out of ten times when you see something like this it has to do with our sun notice your time stamp here this is three day uh, pattern and uh, this is uh, going into the 27th and then the 28th here and then the 29th where we're at today but this happened UTC time on the 28th and you can see where this thing started uh, rising very quickly here you have to around 535 and your peaks coming over there's 54 566 so you're approaching you know 1.3 1.4 million miles per hour and our shields always transfer this energy not only through a heat and uh, actually ground currents through the lines of force but tectonic place, uh, pressure from just the impact and compression alone now guys this is a model of our magnetopause and the way we get the model is there's a group of satellites that surround our planet in this white dotted orbit that pick up this energy as it comes from the sun it will be coming from the right of this image and the center dot here which represents the earth uh, the white side of it in, uh, it represents the sun facing or the daylight side of our planet now the normal standoff when you're dealing with uh, keeping up with this magneto pause is uh, right here at 12 it's called the standoff point and that is your average on a calm day and you can see that even at the beginning of this we were already getting pressure from the elevated solar wind that I mentioned in the video last night but as we play this forward you'll see that uh, pressure continues let me get this going you'll see your timestamp at the top and one energy burst comes in right there as we go through it just picks up strength and then you're gonna see coming into the right the energy in different levels check this out notice that compression of that white line which represents our magnetosphere and the shields there's some bending and corruption of it here but as we get closer into the day you'll see the pressure build up on the right side here and then it's burn off in the back and actually double waves coming in there just building up and you see the burn off along the white line so the earth shields feel this energy look at that but again I'm gonna go through it fast your time stands at the top just bending and right in there guys it really gets strong and you're looking at uh, here on the 28th at 1231 UTC time that's when the earth felt some of the strongest now these satellites sometimes will give us a few minutes heads up depending on the speed of this wind but that is our magneto pause and we're seeing distortion along the northern poles of that and just think about it. if you're standing on earth you got a compass in your hand you're picking up these lines of force both from the north and south pole that's how a compass works now this is the current CME tracker and uh, this one is a much weaker CME than we saw in the last video we were talking about an earth facing one coming in the um, problem with these models is that you could have three or four eruptions from the Sun which would normally create three or four different waves and I have seen back in the day these charts pick up all of these at the same time but even if a weaker one like this shows up they completely erase the information from before that which um, I guess that maybe I don't know why it does that now it used to show multiple CMEs but it is what it is guys we we deal with what uh, instruments that we have and what observations we can make from those but again we've got another smaller CME and this is the one from last night that's going to be approaching us on the 3rd of August check that out right there just before the third in the early hours we'll keep an eye on it. it's not as strong as the one that we just felt it came in a few hours earlier it was supposed to come in uh, this afternoon around seven with a plus or minus seven hour window 
so it came in a little early it left very fast and i've talked about it's sometimes hard to determine the time of impact on our planet because we do not know the muscle velocity of uh when it left the sun guys it, that's important uh, the faster it, that it explodes off the more powerful the quicker it gets here and again uh go back a few days and you'll see um i think it's the video before the one last night about an incoming cme and i talked about i said these spirals for some reason strike the northern uh ring of fire along the alaskan aleutian coast so again that continues to be the same it's i don't know exactly why all i'm doing is using years of uh observance guys and observing these events uh it's amazing to me that it did it hit in the same exact location as I think the last eight two eight point quakes in uh, the end of solar cycle twenty four We're watching it guys uh, if anyone felt the shaking, let me know um, and uh, put it in the comments below kind of give us an idea of how widely that the actual ground shaking uh, was felt. I'm sure the folks up in the Aleutian Islands felt quite a bit. But when you're dealing with eights, you're getting very powerful. When you get into the nines, you, you can say Fukushima, the great quake there. And we saw the results from that, and that was from solar activity. I tracked a, an X flare, very strong, I think uh, 1.3, together with a 3 point, uh or an X3 flare, and they came in as Tokyo was turning broadside to the sun that afternoon, and bam, if when they hit, you saw that shift offshore, and um, probably the most amazing tsunami image that's ever been captured in uh, modern times when we had good cameras. But uh, we're watching this, guys, again. Let us know if you felt the shaking. It's a heads up. Be safe.